In this episode, I have clips from the first part of my 14-day passage from Fiji to New Zealand, involving negotiating a high-pressure zone and avoiding Cyclone Mal by almost bailing to New Caledonia before resuming course southwards. I spent two weeks in Wunder Point Marina getting ready, eating meals in their cafe and the bar restaurant, and enjoying many sunsets. The main boat task was replacing the eight wires in the standing rigging, all of which turned out to have multiple broken strands. I paid a rigger for the wires and top swages, but reused the long stud stay locks I already had at the bottom termini and rigged the wires myself for a total cost of 1,000 US dollars. I also had a marine shop service the leaking raw seawater pump on the left in this image, although it still leaked. And in case I encountered a tropical storm, I prepared the unused Jordan series drove that previous owner Shane Dennis had bought, including setting up the bridle around the back of the wind vane ready for deployment. Well, it's Friday, October 27th, and I have been in Vuda Point Marina for way, way too long, a week. No idea how much longer it's going to be. The wire that I need to finish my rigging is stuck in customs. So, make the best of it. Beautiful sunsets like this. A couple of boats anchored off Vuda Point and their little new land grab on the right hand side here with palms etc. Very nice sunset, nice place to be but I would rather be headed to New Zealand. And there we go, beautiful sunset over the Manamuka Islands including the famous Musket Cove. Well, it's Saturday the 28th of October. I'm on this big yellow metal mooring hall that belongs to Vuda Marina which you can see in the background there. And I guess it's for emergencies, but during the day they let us tie up and clean the bottom, which is something I have to do for New Zealand. So here's my plastic scraper, my scotch pad, my gloves, goggles, and over the side I go. It's actually not as bad as I thought it might be. I've been here for three months. So I cleaned it when I first got here. It's not too much growth. It all comes off easily. so. Should all be good. Uh, it's now afternoon on Saturday. The other boats that were anchored out here are gone. Beautiful northeast breeze, perfect for going to Musket Cove. And I am toast. Oish. Much harder work than you first think. I only got half of it done. Oh, now it's Saturday, the 29th, no, Sunday, 29th, and I'm back out here again, no other boats out, back with the tools, I've gotten the port side finished, I'm going to finish the starboard side, again there's a northeast wind that completely unpredicted, making it really rough doing this work, anyway, going to get it finished today. Oh, no, it's Sunday afternoon, and I'm done with the scraping. It's got the final few nasty things to do, see through holes with the screwdrivers and the propeller and the zincs with the steel scraper. Meanwhile, some unhappy news from New Zealand. There's a sailor had to get rescued from the massive storm just north of New Zealand. Just as well, I wasn't headed down that way and still have to wait for new wire. I would work on the boat each morning while it was still relatively cool, then spend the midday heat in their cafe socializing with other cruisers, including this boat cat. Here's my setup for replacing the forestay inside the furlough without dismantling the furlough, which was successful. Finally, it was time to leave. But first, Mandy and Chris arrived in the slip next to me on their big catamaran Bedouin. And amazingly, they grew up in East London, just like me, just a decade younger. 
and they gave me a pack of tennis biscuits, a South African treat. Thanks, guys. Bizarrely, another South African product was available in the marina store. My favorite juice, guava. How amazing is that? All right. They're tying the flowers of Funda onto the pulpit. Very pretty. Take a little bit of Funda with me. And here's some of the staff who are going to sing goodbye. This is Bedouin, the catamaran with Chris and Mandy, who, believe it or not, 10 years younger than me, grew up in East London, South Africa. Sea change is all ready to go. Here's the cat I've been next to, unoccupied, and the rest of the circle in the background, the boats that are in pits. Thank you, Vinaka, Vinaka. It's Thursday, November the 2nd, and I'm leaving Punta Point Marina for the last time. Here's the restaurant. Behind us, the bay, the eastern basin over there, all the catamarans on the hard here, and then the new western basin over here for big boats. A lot of people clearing out today. There are 11 boats <coughs> clearing out. A whole bunch going to go tomorrow. And the weekend, we'll have to see what the weather's like. It looks a little mixed. All right, it's November the 2nd, Thursday, and I'm leaving Wunder Point Marina. And here is Jack Iron with Kent and Michelle on board. Met them going into Savu Savu more than a month ago. Hey guys, all the best! Thanks, bye! They're having their bottom professionally cleaned and they'll get a certificate for New Zealand. Just hanging on this mooring here where I cleaned the bottom of my boat myself. Oh, it's Thursday, November the 2nd and I am on my way to New Zealand, hopefully leaving Fiji. I arrived here three months ago, went to Tonga, back to Fiji. been sitting in Funda Point Marina for two weeks now, getting the rigging all done. I have nice shiny brand new, very taut wire and we're just having a nice gentle sail out of here. Uh, it's a southwesterly, it's a wraparound of the trades. We'll be easterly once we get out of Nandi Bay here and we're just going along at 45 knots with everything but the last reef and there's uh, the whole bay Landy Bay, Denera over there Landy Airport, it's a plane landing right in that smoke and then way behind us just on the tip there, Vuda Point Marina all right hopefully next stop New Zealand well finally saying goodbye to Fiji this is the Navula Pass in the background there are the Mamanukas. You see tiny little swells breaking on the reef. There's one marker over there, another marker way back through there, little white thing. And that's Fiji Levu, and you can just make out the reef on the other side. 
mountain up in front here. This wave's breaking on it. So we're about to get out this pass, the Nabulu Nugula Passage, and head to New Zealand. So it's Friday, November the 3rd. Day two of the passage to New Zealand, and in stark contrast to last night, which was a wild and crazy night, so rough. I even fed the fish for only the second time. And now, beautiful blue sky, full sail. Last night was triple reef main and stay sail. And we're cruising along at five to seven knots. Very nice. Just a gorgeous day. I don't know why the seas have sat down so much, but the wind is down to five to, I mean, 12 to 15 versus 25 last night. So I guess that explains why it's down. And we have three fishing lines out with no takers. I was able to track several other boats on this passage using the Predict Wind Tracker. Some ahead of us and some behind and catching up. We are the white dot in the middle with a red track. Well, Saturday, the 4th of November. A yeah, very good night last night, racing south. But then by about 9 o'clock this morning, we were flat becalmed, but rolling like crazy with the swells coming from every direction. So, on with the motor. We've got a little bit of a breeze from the north that's helping us along here, a little bit of motor sailing, we've got all the sails up. And in the distance, we are finally approaching a line of clouds that I hope are the forebrong bringer of some new wind. It should be from the south. I'm not forecast to have this wind from the north, but oh well. We're headed southwest, and once the new breeze comes, we should be good. No, oh, it's 10 a.m. Sunday, November the 5th, and we are just as becalmed as we were yesterday when I went for a swim. Then I chose to try to motor south, spent six hours doing that, another six hours during the night trying to motor sail with a little bit of a breeze southwest. At about 2 a.m. I finally had enough, a poor engine, a seawater pump that was Supposedly repaired in Wunder Point Marina by Baobab Marine. Still leaking like crazy, now spraying water all over the engine. So I finally gave up, started sailing. The best I could do in the light breeze was straight west. So like this cargo ship that is setting off my AIS alarm, you might be able to hear in the background, it's called Sea Trader White, classic little cargo ship with three cranes and a bunch of containers. It's going from Fiji to New Caledonia, to Noumea. And that may be what I'm going to do instead of going to New Zealand at this point. This is ridiculous. The forecast has 15 to 20 from the south, and I've got maybe five at most. You can hear the sails slatting behind me. Otherwise, it's an incredibly beautiful day. I mean, just look at it. Clearly high pressure on top of us. Absolutely blue sky. Brilliant sunshine. Nothing else around. Nope, except a piece of trash. <laughs> hey, look at that. It's only the third piece of trash. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Oh, there it is. What is it? Some sort of bottle or can or something brown with a white lid. The other two pieces were square pieces of white plastic and I'm a little suspicious that it was the same piece of white plastic. Oh well. Anyway, we're just gonna wander along. I'm tired of fighting with the engine, trying to get to New Zealand. And we're just going to take our time and if we end up in New Caledonia, we end up in New Caledonia. Here's the leaking raw seawater pump on the left. 
and what I thought was spray from it corroding the top of the engine, but turned out to be a failing anti-siphon valve on the top of the anti-siphon loop. Well, after sitting becalmed for quite a while, we finally have a little breeze. I'll be lazy and just sit here and give you my 180 degree panorama here that I enjoy all day, at least a good part of it. We've got ripples now on the surface of the water, not yet any white caps, of course, it's blowing maybe five to ten max. We're doing three, four knots just ghosting along here. There's leftover swell coming from various different directions, but the primary one is from straight behind like that. Just a nice little shove along the way. And we are sailing due west, which is not going to get us to New Zealand, but with any luck, may get us to New Caledonia. I got half of it right anyway. You can see the three days we sailed due west towards New Caledonia in part because initially the southerly wind did not allow much else, but then because Cyclone Mal was forming north of us and heading our way, which would eventually sideswipe Bunda Point Marina, causing them to close the entrance once all the boats with reservations were packed in like sardines in this drone image. Now we have a frigate bird that is just cruising on our draft here. Meanwhile, I've changed my mind about going to New Caledonia and having a second shot at going to New Zealand. This may not be the best idea, but I'm going to give it a go. This is, what is this? I think this is Tuesday. On the tracker, you can see that I had just turned south, the white dot on red track on the left, while Glenn and Pat on Northern Rose had left Winter Point Marina behind us. Meanwhile, Jean Socrates on the radar had almost arrived in New Zealand from Tonga. Oh, it's Thursday, the 9th of November, morning time, and now oh, we've got a very grey overcast day, but it's a promise that it will clear up as it has oh, every other day so far on this trip. We're a week in now on the trip to New Zealand and at least a week to go. But at least today compared with yesterday, conditions are relatively calm. We've got a light breeze. It's finally from the east so we can go straight south. And you can see the leftover swells and waves bouncing us around, but it's not bad. And we have the full main here, kind of bagged out these days, full of repairs. Oh boy, you can see a repair there that's coming apart. But anyway, it's holding on. And uh, yeah, we're just taking it slowly. It's getting cool. I'm starting to put socks on, long pants, sweaters even jackets and have a sheet on at night soon there'll be a blanket and eventually a sleeping bag now this morning we had clouds and about 10 maybe 12 knots full sail we were going along okay three and a half four knots and then within a period of about five minutes, the clouds cleared, the sun came out, and it was howling. And I reefed down as fast as I could, and we're down to the triple reef main. Still got the full jib, but we are absolutely motoring along upwind here. It's pretty darned rough, healing 25 to 40 degrees. I'll try holding the camera on the horizon and you can see what the boat's doing. Notice that the wind vane is pointed straight at me. So that's the angle of the apparent wind. It's only about 20 degrees, maybe 30. 
and yet we're only able to maintain about 60 degrees to the actual wind. Uh, she's a big old heavy boat, bagged out old sails, but hey, we're hanging in here. It's day seven and we are halfway to New Zealand. Weather forecast, knock on wood, looks good. Another week and we should be there. This still shot shows typical angle of heel, making life on board difficult. But I was reassured about our poor pointing ability when I saw Nareda's track as Jean tacked her way up the last hundred miles to New Zealand. And Jack Iron, who left two and a half days after us, easily caught up and passed us, sadly just too far away to be contacted by radio. The next two clips will give you an idea of how noisy it is on board sailing upwind like this. Try closing your eyes and imagine lying in my bunk trying to sleep during the minute of the second clip. And that does not include all the chaotic motion. This is what it sounds like at night when it's rough, eating up when jumping off waves. Saturday the 10th and oh gosh we are in the middle of an intense squall and have the triple reef main stay sail and unfortunately the full jib it didn't occur to me to partially furl it before this hit we're heeled over at 45 degrees with water coming over into the cockpit and it is absolutely deluging. Holy smokes. This is the first rain we've had in an awfully long time. Wow. Okay. Let's hope we survive it. Yeah, well, this is what the boat looks like when you're living at 25 to 30 degrees. Just stuff piled up front. All the heavy things on the floor up front there to stop them hitting me. You see the angle of the dangle on the, on the towels there. I have to hold on all the time. Various clothing on the port bunk here. Here's my bunk. Uh, using a sheet at night. There's the nice warm socks. My books. Computer. And on the floor, a pan and a sponge because water keeps accumulating. I had no idea where it comes from. I see all the portholes leak. So I have plastic bags and containers on all of them. It keeps most of the water. And the galley, of course, is a mess. I haven't cooked for a couple of days now. And yo, oh, it's almost 40 degrees there, right there. And uh, yeah. Got to brace yourself and hold on all the time. I am narrating this clip as the wind noise is intolerable. Sadly, we did not fare so well with the subsequent squall, where I again failed to furl the jib in time and it tore in half. I managed to furl the torn sail after the squall passed and before the next one hit. It was not a catastrophe, as I had two options. Either put on a spare stay sail that Jacob and Christelle had adapted for the furler, or put on my 130% Genoa, which I had not used since the Galapagos. 
I tried the stay sail, but it was too small. So later put on the Genoa. But for now, I had to bear off a little to maintain speed on a close reach with only triple reef main and the stay sail. Ah, it's still Saturday the 10th and it's quite a spectacular scene. We are reaching now in probably 20 knots, which will go way, whoa, way up when we get into this next squall again. And we're getting rolled around like crazy by the waves, which are building fast. And some of them are wanting to break in the afternoon sun with this squall behind it. It's just gorgeous. What an amazing day. It's a real pity about the jib, but we're headed south. We're going to get to 30 south tonight. And then it's another 5 degrees south to Apua in New Zealand. Hopefully by Friday. Alright, what a day. Uh, Sunday the 12th. Things have calmed down a little bit. Still making progress south. A few minutes ago. Hey, I guess the alarm went off for this boat. BBC Everest, a German boat with German skipper. And said that we were going to be 50 meters apart at the closest point of approach. So I called them up and they kindly said we will divert to starboard to avoid you. By now it was getting quite cold at night, so I slept fully clothed with a large towel for a blanket, but was always up early and on the next day enjoyed a gorgeous dawn over a period of an hour from first light to sunbreak. In the second part of this passage, after sailing upwind and south for six days, we negotiate a high pressure ridge and then turn southeast for New Zealand. 